So theoretically, you have a 21st century education, or maybe a 20th century education if you're a bit older, but, uh, you know, whatever. Anyway, the point is, you've got a pretty advanced education in terms of the history of the human race and all of that, but what if you got in a time machine and you went back in time a couple thousand years? Could you actually impress anybody? I mean, if you just tell them about how good you are at Instagram, they're going to just not have any idea what you're talking about and maybe burn you at the stake as a witch because you're weird. But, you know, I think it would be cool if we could actually impress people with our knowledge. Could we actually do something? Well, I could take a stick and measure the circumference of the earth. And it doesn't even need to be that big of a stick. Okay, so how would I do that? I'm, I might actually need two sticks and I might, might need a, a volunteer to help me. Anyway, how could I do that? Well, I would do it using, well, Pac-Man, of course. Okay, well, actually, no. What I'm going to run through with you today is actually why this wouldn't impress anybody 2,000 years ago, because this was already done by a guy named Eratosthenes, uh, ancient Greek guy in like the 3rd century BC, and he had an idea. His idea was that the Earth is probably round because if we look at other planets and things, they're round, so why wouldn't the Earth be? If you think that, that Christopher Columbus somehow was like the first guy to realize the Earth was round, then, you know, you didn't get a very good education. Speaking of that 21st century education. Anyway, um, so Eratosthenes was in Alexandria, and... He uh, enlisted some help from somebody over in a place called Syene. And these, uh, this was a well-known trade route, which means that he knew that the distance between these cities uh, was about, uh, you know, we don't, uh, and to be honest here, guys, we, we don't have his actual exact perfect calculations or anything like that. We just know the rough details of what he did. So I'm going to add a few things in here that might not be exactly how he did them, but we're going to give an example of how this experiment could work. Um, so these are well-known trade routes. He would have known the distance. We use them in modern measurements. They're about 500 miles apart. Okay, so what are these lines going on over here? Well, this was his brilliant idea. The sun, being so much bigger than the earth and so far away, um, would cast sun rays that, while they're maybe not perfectly parallel with each other, in comparison to the size of the earth, uh, versus the sun and how far they travel, they might as well be parallel lines. Okay, so we've got some parallel lines here. And then his thought is, what if I put a stick in Alexandria on Midsummer's Day at noon or whatever when it doesn't cast a shadow? Okay, so that one would cast no shadow. But what if I put a stick in Syene at the same time? And then this sun ray comes along and it casts a shadow. And what if you measure that shadow? Could we use this to calculate the circumference of the Earth? Well, yeah, yeah, you could. And why could we do that? Because if these lines are parallel, if we have parallel lines, then what we get is alternate interior angles that have to be equal. Which means that if we basically um, calculate the angle that that shadow is forming, then we could calculate the circumference of the Earth if we understand that we now just have a proportion of the total Earth out of 360. Okay, so let's, let's add in some measurements and kind of say how we, how we would do this. So let's say that this cast a 7.2 uh, degree angle. So if that cast a set, uh, if that shadow there formed a 7.2 degree angle, then that means that this was a 7.2 degree angle, right? Because of the parallel lines and alternate interior lines and all of that. So what would you do? What would you do? Well, we know that this is 7.2 degrees out of 360 degrees. And that is the proportion that 500 miles is out of the total circumference of the Earth. And the answer to this problem will be uh, posted 
in the comments, or maybe the description of this video. I actually like you guys. Try to solve this thing. Can you figure out the circumference of the Earth? And then compare it to the actual circumference of the Earth, if you like. Google it and see how close you got. And I'm looking forward to hearing you guys in the comments section. I hope you guys have an excellent day and had some fun with this problem.